Hello everyone, this is Arlene. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the Reno, Nevada area. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I created this channel so that I can make and share video tutorials on cards and also projects made with stamping. So today's project that I want to show you is this fun little card here. This is a little smaller than usual, but it's a trifold card. So it opens up to reveal three, actually three different layers. So there's the first one and then you open it up to, to this. And then for this particular card, the third layer would be right here, the third design. I'm going to make switch it up and make today's on today's video this card just a little bit different. The stamp set that I'm using for the card today is the Gather Together set. It's a set of 10. It is, um, it was from last year. They brought it back into the mini catalog that is available now through the end of December. And now I'm also using the coordinating dies. This is called the Gathered Leaves die set. The paper that I'm using is going to be a piece of cherry cobbler cardstock. This is a piece that is four and a fourth inches by 10 and a half. And then I will be scoring it at three and a half and seven inches. I also have a piece of crumb cake and this is three and a quarter by four inches. And then another piece of designer series paper, the same size. So it's three and a quarter by four inches. This is from the 2020, 2022 in color colors. And this is the color bumblebee. And don't worry, I'll have all the measurements for you on my blog. So you can always run over there and check out the measurements. And then I'm also going to need just a piece of very vanilla. This is for stamping um, the leaves and the pumpkins on. And then a scrap piece of cherry cobbler. You'll need smaller than this, just a little bit really for that, um, for cutting out. And then a little piece of the gold foil or a metallic color of your choice. For the P the card base, which is the cherry cobbler, this is the 10 and a half by four and a fourth inches. I am going to be scoring it using my paper trimmer, the scoring blade, and I'm scoring it at three and a half inches. Make sure you use the scoring blade on this and then seven inches. And you'll want to give this a nice little fold because sometimes if there's a little bit excess right here, and so what I do is I just go ahead and trim off just a little bit on the edge, and this will help the card to lay just a little better, um, so it'll be flatter. And you can see that it will lay much flatter like that. Using the scrap of very vanilla cardstock and the Memento Black ink, I'm going to be stamping this the leaf design stamp onto the very vanilla as well as each of the pumpkin designs. On the top piece of the card stock, the cherry cobbler, I have the piece of the bumblebee designer series paper and I'm just going to take a little bit of Stampin' Steel and then position it, center it and position it there on top just enough so that it will stay. So that way when I place my die cut over, it won't move. And I also like to take a piece of washi tape and use this to help keep that stamp in place right here. Okay, so I will run this through my die cutting machine. And at the same time, I will also cut out the leaf and the two pumpkins using the coordinating dies. This particular die set comes with three leaves. They cut out on the edges and they also emboss. So for this card, I'm choosing to cut out three of the smaller size leaves with the gold foil. You can see that the die cut easily cut through both the cardstock layer and the designer series paper. And then I have the cutouts of the leaf and two of the pumpkins. And this is where the fun really happens. Taking my Stampin' Blends, I am going to color in the leaf and the pumpkins. So I'll start with the 
largest pumpkin here. And I have a dark clips of coral. And I just like to go where it's probably going to be the darkest. So think of the shadow and think of where you want the light to be hitting your pumpkin. And I'm choosing to have the light hit direct center. So that means I wanna have the lightest color in there. So then I take the next color I have, which is the light pumpkin pie. And I'll be using the smaller tip and then just apply that and just go keep re um, just go over the color that you already have gone on. So this is because they're alcohol based markers. It's just kind of a it's a blending. Um, they're they're great for blending. But what I've noticed about these is it just does take some time. I like to think of, you know, when I want to stamp, I want instant results sometimes. And this is more of just, you know, taking your time and just enjoying the process. And I'm going to also take, there is a light, or the light mango melody. And this is gonna go right in the lightest here. That's where the, the light is shining on my pumpkin. It might have a little here and a little here too. So give it some depth. And then I'll go back with the light pumpkin pie and then blend that until I'll just keep repeating the process until I have it all colored in. So you can see that I've colored in the two pumpkins and next let's move on to the leaf. I'm starting in the old olive. This is the the light old olive. And I'm just showing you that just kind of different, some different markers because I don't own um, all of the Stampin' Blends. So what I like to do is see what colors do I have that will work. And lots of times if you have just even a small collection, you can make a lot of these markers work to what for what you want. So here's the light olive. And again, I just like to work in sections. And then I will take the little bit of the light pumpkin pie and just kind of randomly place color there. And then that real red, I have the light, this is the light real red. Just a touch, so it's a fall leaf. Okay, and then going over with the light so saffron, I'm going to blend. This is kind of a blending tool. I take that lightest color and I just work in all the colors together. And that darker color will need to go, I need to go over that a little bit more just to get it blended in. And you see how it sometimes carries a little bit of the color to blend in with the leaves. Okay, and then I'm going to repeat the whole process to cover up, to color in the rest of the leaf. Okay, and now we have the leaf colored in as well and blended, and we're ready for our next step. Now that we have the image all colored in, the next step is to add a coat of embossing powder over. I've taken, I'm taking a Versamark pad and then just going to turn it upside down and just get that ink from the ink pad onto my stamped image, my cutout. Um, the next step is this embossing powder and I'm just going to not worry about getting too much on there because I'm just going to tap the excess off and the excess will just get poured back into the container and then I'm going to need to set this with heat so I've got an embossing tool here or a heat embossing tool this is just a, a high heat that shoots out of this and it will melt the embossing powder onto the image And you can see how it gives it a glossy look after just one image, but it doesn't have a smooth coat quite yet. And so I'm going to repeat this embossing process two more times for a total of three layers of embossing powder. So after the third pass of embossing powder, the clear, it is nice and glossy and has a really smooth finish up on top and it's ready to go. 
using the Whisper White Craft Ink and the saying, so glad to have you in my life from the stamp set. I'm just going to be stamping that onto a piece of the cherry cobbler. Okay, the crafting does take a little bit longer to dry. So I actually have another one that I made earlier. It's ready to go. And then I'm taking the classic label punch and just going to punch that out. Now this fits just pretty much exact. There's not a lot of room on either side, but it does fit and punch out. And now that we have all the components, we're ready to put the card together. So I have the card base, which is made out of the cherry cobbler that I've already die cut out. I did remove because it was just a small piece of glue. I removed the top that I had already die cut from the, the bumblebee um, paper. And then I'm just going to place some glue. I like to use the liquid glue for this because in case I need to kind of move it around a little bit, I can. It doesn't dry right away. I just wanna line that up. I'm doing this after so that I know I don't have glue like in the middle, um, it might not cut out as well. Now the next thing I'm going to do is take the dye that I, of the leaf, and let's put some Stampin' Dimensionals on here. And then what I'm going to do is place it on the second panel, but I want to make sure that it lines up just right with the die cut from the cutout from the first panel just to make sure so that way when I open the card it will close okay like that okay and then for the third panel I have the piece of crumb cake and I ran it through the with the embossing folder this is the wrapped in texture this is in the mini catalog and I used the bottom texture right here ran it through We'll go ahead and glue that down to the third panel. Like that. Okay. And then take some mini dimensionals. And I just like to get two of them. One on each side. And I'm going to close the first panel over and just to make sure that we have that lined up place it about right here and it will be okay if it goes over a little bit because it's actually the third panel so okay so we close it like that and have that there now let's decorate the outside with the three leaves that I cut out from the foil I'm just going to take some glue and then place it there on the bottom right Okay. And then I'm, what I'm going to be doing is placing the pumpkins right here. So before I actually glue the second leaf down, I just like to place it, just position it where I want it to be to make sure that this third leaf will show through where I place it at, where I glue it down like that. And then the third leaf is going to go up in the corner here. like that and I think I'm going to take my stamp and seal for this and then again some more a couple more of stamp and dimensionals I'll take a larger one and a little mini and go ahead and glue that over the larger pumpkin so there we've got that, it opens up, there's the leaf. It opens up like this to reveal the leaf inside, the second layer, and then the third layer is the inside right here, and you can write a sentiment on the, on the edge over here, okay? So let me show you the first one that I had made, just a, just a little bit different. This I actually embossed in white, and it would open up where the third layer is. I just switched the layers around, the panels, like that. Thanks so much for watching and make sure to check out my blog for all the measurements and products used in this card and have a great day. Thanks, bye. Shoot, now I'm missing my, uh, oh, there it is. Okay, Whew, got it. Okay.
you have to you have to drain it out and then you got to add a little bit of mayonnaise at a time and some mustard barely if you want okay i'm gonna record i am recording and i just want to have it where that's okay go ahead because I, I just messed up thank you for watching this video today i hope you liked it and also press at um at the thumbs up button which is red and bye bye thank you for watching please subscribe to see more of our channels